In this video, we discuss how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. Right, the starting point of our discussion is going to be this expression, which allows us to ultimately relate the standard molar Gibbs energy of a reaction with the equilibrium constant. Remember that this equation allows you to predict whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not under any conditions. All right, so uh, the idea here is that at equilibrium, then what happens is that uh, this value is zero, right? And also, it happens that Q is equal to K, right? That is what happens at equilibrium. And then at equilibrium, uh, you can see that this expression then turns into delta R G M naught plus R T natural log of K. And then uh, you find a relationship between uh, the more Gibbs energy of reaction at the standard state and the equilibrium constant. Now, this is good because it allows you to compute the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction simply from the value of the more Gibbs energy of reaction, which is something that you can get from thermodynamic tables uh, uh, of products and reagent species in the reaction. Now, this equation is also very useful because it allows you to see how the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction depends on temperature. And to see that, uh, uh, we can simply uh, solve this expression for the natural log of K, right, and then uh, study how that would, would vary with temperature. Okay, when we solve this for the natural log of K, the equilibrium constant, notice that this is uh, going to be equal to minus delta RGM over RT. Okay, and uh, this uh, uh, equilibrium constant then uh, is shown is shown a dependence on the temperature. There is that the more Gibbs energy depends on temperature, and then uh, you also have a temperature dependence right here, right? So to actually uh, see exactly how this depends on temperature, what we do is we unfold this Gibbs energy into the enthalpy and entropy contributions. Right, so that is going to be equal to minus delta R D M standard R T. Or again, that would be the enthalpy term plus delta R S M over R. Okay, and again, what we have done here is simply plug that the change in uh, Gibbs energy is equal to the change in enthalpy uh, minus the temperature times the change in entropy. Okay, so what you have right uh, right here is kind of the uh, unfolded expression of the Gibbs energy uh, uh, into the enthalpy and entropy components. Now what we're going to do is just compare how this expression changes for two different temperatures so that we can arrive at an expression that is going to be, uh, that is going to allow us to compute how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. All right, so I'm going to assume that this is going to be uh, the equilibrium constant at a temperature that I'm going to call T sub 2 and that is going to be equal to minus delta RHM standard R at a temperature T sub 2, and then this is sigma plus the change in entropy of the reaction more standard divided over R. And I can do the same thing at a different temperature T1. Okay, so that will be a natural log of K at the temperature T1 is going to be equal to the change in enthalpy in the reaction more standard R at a temperature T1 plus the change in entropy in the reaction more standard over R. Okay, so this is a uh, degree and constant at a temperature T2, and that is degree and constant at a temperature T1. To find an expression that relates those two, we simply uh, can subtract uh, uh, the bottom equation from the top equation and see what we get. Okay, so that would be now uh, subtraction. And then what we have right here is natural log of K at a temperature T2 minus natural log of K at a temperature T1 is going to be equal to the difference of these two expressions. What we do here is invoke an approximation uh, uh, that we have to discuss. The approximation is that the enthalpy of the reaction and the entropy of the reaction, uh, they don't change with temperature. Okay, that is uh, an approximation that is generally not valid, but it becomes increasingly valid if the change in temperature that you're uh, looking at, if the difference between T1 and T2 is small, right? So when that temperature uh, change is rather small, then uh, that approximation is quite valid. We can assume that the change in enthalpy with, uh, of reaction enthalpy with temperature is not very large, and the change in reaction entropy with temperature is not very large either, 
and then we can consider them to be constant. But in general, that approximation is uh, not true. Nevertheless, for the purposes of this uh, uh, chapter, for this section, we're always going to be assuming that the enthalpy of the reaction doesn't change with temperature, and the entropy doesn't change with temperature either. And again, even though that's not true, that is sufficient for uh, the level at which we want to learn this. Okay, so if we assume that this uh, enthalpy and entropy doesn't change uh, with temperature, notice that these two terms, when you take the difference, are going to disappear. And then what you have left over is simply the enthalpy terms. Okay, RT2 minus minus delta RH M over RT1. And we can now consolidate this to show that the Nuts log of the Degree and constant at temperature T2 divider divided over the degree and constant at temperature T1 is going to be equal to minus delta RHM divided over the um, gas constant, and then we take common factor of 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, so this is the expression that allows us to calculate the equilibrium constant at a temperature of our choice, T2, if we know what the equilibrium constant is at a different temperature, T1, as long as we know what the enthalpy of the reaction is. Okay, And we're going to illustrate how this equation works with an applied example, a numerical example. The numerical example is going to be uh, the dimerization of nitrogen dioxide into dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, So we're looking at this reaction two molecules of nitrogen dioxide uh, dimerize into N2O4, this equilibrium. All right, and uh, the question would be, please calculate what the equilibrium constant would be at 373 Kelvin. Okay, and the data that we have is that uh, delta R G M naught, okay, this number is equal to minus 5.6 uh, kilojoules per mole. We also have that the change in entropy is equal to um, minus 176 joules per mole Kelvin. And the change in uh, enthalpy of the reaction under standard conditions is equal to minus 58 kilojoules per mole. All right, so uh, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate um, the value KT1. Notice that all of these numbers, especially that one, this is at 298 Kelvin. Okay, that happens only at 298 Kelvin. Well, if we have the value of the Gibbs energy at 298 Kelvin, then we can calculate what the equilibrium constant at the temperature would be, because we know that the equilibrium constant is equal to E to the minus delta RG naught over RT. All right, so if, this is, uh, if we have that value at 298 Kelvin, the only thing that we need to do is plug uh, the temperature there at 298 Kelvin, and then find out what the equilibrium constant would be. Okay, so with these numbers, once you operate correctly, you find out that the equilibrium constant is 9.6. Right, so that is the equilibrium constant of uh, this reaction at 298 Kelvin, which means that the equilibrium is displaced towards the right. Okay, so at equilibrium, you have more of the nitrogen tetroxide that you have of nitrogen uh, dioxide. Now, this is not the end of the problem. Uh, notice that this temperature, uh, this equilibrium constant is at 298 Kelvin. What we would like to calculate is what is the equilibrium constant at 373 Kelvin. Okay, so for that, we're going to be using this expression. All right, so uh, we have all the data. Notice that we have this value, right, that is 9.6. We also have what the value is of the enthalpy of the reaction that is provided by the problem. That happens to be minus 58 uh, kilojoules per mole. And then uh, T1 is 298 Kelvin, and T2, which is our target temperature, is 373 Kelvin. Okay? Uh, the only difficulty here then is going to be to make sure that the units of the enthalpy and R are the same. Right? So notice that R. If you use kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy, then this has to be 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Okay, if you do that, then all of the units are um, uh, copacetic, and then what happens here is that you can solve for this case uh, sub T2. 
Okay, so the value of k at t2 happens to be equal to 0 0.087. Right? Uh, that t2, we have chosen it to be 373 Kelvin. Right, so this is very interesting because there's a dramatic change in the equilibrium constant when you increase the temperature. Okay, you notice, uh, notice that you go from a reaction uh, at 298 Kelvin on equilibrium that is displaced towards products, right? So you have uh, the products dominate in the reaction mixture, but then if you increase the temperature to 373 Kelvin, then uh, the opposite happens, right? At higher temperature, then this uh, uh, equilibrium is displaced towards reagents, and you have that uh, reagents dominate the reaction mixture. Okay, so, um, all right, in this video we have seen how to uh, compute how the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction changes with temperature uh, using uh, the variation of the Moore-Gibbs energy with temperature.